Okay. And we'll see what we got from eBay here. I got a couple big boxes came in today. I just got done knocking out these knucklehead cases here. It's, it's almost noon. The dark noon. So I'm gonna see what's in here. I think I know what's in these big boxes, but a couple of big boxes here. One says 69 pounds and the other one's not as heavy. Small one first. Let's see, a little bit closer than that. I guess I'm a little bit closer. Got too much knucklehead crap in the way over here. Well used box. Been used more than once. Ah, that's not what I was expecting in that box. But I'll take it. That's one of these. I got one of these. All right. So that would be a Sportster XLCH oil tank. Ah, sixties. Okay, let's see what we got. Is it an early one or a late one? It's a late one. Early ones have a big hemorrhoid sticking down here about this far. <laughs> for a drain. So they stick way hell down here. So this is a later one. I'm not sure what year they changed, but 57 or 8 was the first year of an XLCH. I think 58. So the that's when they first used the tank. And then the uh, somewhere in probably 62-ish time frame was when they started changing a lot of stuff on the bikes. Probably 62 is when they changed this to this style of a tank. But it might have been a little later. Could have, been, could have been as late as 65 before they went to this style. And they did a bunch of changes in 65 too. But I don't know. I'm going to have to figure that out. But somewhere in there, somebody might clue me in. But this is a later tank, no doubt about it. It's not a Paco tank, it's a Harley tank. So these are not the correct bolts. The correct bolts are undercut because the frame goes right through and it's tight. So they make extra clearance in here for tubing to go around it. And they have a clamp that goes across here that's one, one thick piece of metal that's got the sculpture cut of the frame a little bit. And that gives you a nice good squeeze on your two frame rails that come right down through here. They're not the metal, it's on the outside. This hole in here is stock. The oil tank is actually over here. This is just in the bracket. There we go. And there's another one down here because it's a sealed chamber, but it's open, so let's water through it. There's supposed to be another bracket right here that's missing. This one's bent too. That's probably why it's broken. It's not supposed to be bent down like that. It's supposed to be straight. And it looks like it's been welded before. Yep, it's been welded before because it broke once before and then it broke again. Because they don't have the correct mounting bracket down here for the height of the tank. Oh well. A few extra dents in there. Of course somebody chrome plated it. Butt ugly. Got the screw in dip stick like it's supposed to. Looks like a pan head does it. Got a dipstick in it also. That dipstick looks funny though. And I don't recognize that one. These are their flat. Yeah, that's that's a weird looking dipstick. Looks too nice to be reproduction, but it's different. So maybe it's correct for Sportster, I don't know. It's definitely different. It's not panhead. Can't see in there too well what's inside the tank, but we have a cure for that. It's called light. Let there be light. Too much shrapnel in there. I mean, overall, doesn't look too bad for cleanness. 
looks halfway clean. Oh, there's shrapnel in it. That's good. So the chains like to eat these things up. The chains get loose because people uh, run them really loose, and they also, when you lower the bike down, they, they drag. So we only have a little bit of a drag mark right here. And so, you know, if you want to go in here and weld that back up before it goes all the way through, it'd be nice. But uh, anyway, that'd be. One thing that's really bad about the tank is that, and you know, obviously the bracket in the front are broken off, but in the ugly chrome. But over now, it's a pretty presentable tank. Looks pretty damn nice. Got all the correct fittings in here, like they're supposed to be. You can see how they run these fittings coming out the side. This actually is a banjo bolt up here for the vent line. This is not the feed. This is the return. This is the feed. Um, and just like on a big twin tank, everything's on one side of the tank, so this side doesn't see anything. <laughs> this is the working part of the tank right over here. <laughs> it returns right here and comes right back down here. It makes a loop, goes right back down. So not much a cooling effect or a separation of oil. It just goes right back into the bottom and out again. So it'd be nice if they returned it over here on this side and then it'd go all the way across to come back out. But you know, that's too much. That'd be too much thinking. So, but anyway, that's how they did it. I don't know why they had these extra fittings, but they always did over here. But anyway, but yeah, it looks pretty good. Not a bad piece. I'm good with that. There you go. I'm gonna call that. A, they use that up through uh, 69 as the last year of an XLCH, so they use that tank through 69. So it's definitely a 65 to 69 tank, but it might be all the way back to 62. But I don't know. I'm sure somebody will let me know, or I'll figure it out and post it in the in a title. There you go.